reach escape velocity soon. And at some point, they'll just pop right out of the gravity and then they'll be floating, which is another problem because if you were in a vacuum and you were using rocket thrusters or any, anything to thrust your, yourself forward, you wouldn't go forward or in any direction you wanted to. You'd just spin wildly out of control like a gyroscope in 360 degrees in three dimensions, spinning wildly. You, you don't go anywhere that way. Oh, God, that's classic. All right, today we're going to talk about Eric Dubay and space travel. Let's see whether or not he actually knows Newton's laws of motion. So cue up the music and let's hit it. Um, so the whole idea of space travel is a big joke. It's, it's all science fiction. You can't land on the moon. There's nothing to land on. It's just a light, and I can prove it to you right now. Now this ought to be good. On any afternoon, and look at the moon, you'll see the blue of the sky through the part of the moon that isn't illuminated. Now, so let me get this straight. The atmosphere is blue. The moon is on the other side of the atmosphere. The moon is in space, and it's dark except for the parts of the moon that the sun is shining on. So, remember, blue sky, shiny moon, shiny moon comes through blue sky, because we can see it, dark part of the moon we can't see, sky's still blue. Can we, can we conceptualize this, Eric? Proving that it couldn't be a solid sphere to land something on, but that it's just a light and you can see through it. People have photographed stars through the moon. You, you know, I had a real good look at this thing. That's an airplane or a balloon. That's something that's in the atmosphere. That's not a star. You can see the blue of the sky through the moon during any waxing and waning cycle. You can see for yourself that it's, it's a light and it's casting its own light, unlike they tell us that it's a reflector of the sun's light. You can prove that its light is different from the sun's light. It's cold. If you take a thermometer and put it in the shade and another thermometer and put it in the direct moonlight, it's actually colder in direct moonlight and the thermometer will go up in the shade, the exact opposite of the sun. Now folks, Greater Sapien actually did a really nice experiment with this with a series of thermometers uh, in covered and shaded and open locations on his back porch in California. Now, living in a cold climate in the northern part of the United States, there's something that I've known since childhood, and that is that during the winter, if it is a very clear night, it's colder than it is when it's cloudy out. Now, the reason for this is very simple. What happens as the sun beats down on the earth during the day, it warms up the ground. Now, at night, that heat radiates back out of the ground and off into space. If it's a very clear night, that, that heat is just lost. If you're under a tree or under cloud cover, that heat is held in, and as a result, it's a little bit warmer. This is a well-described physical phenomena that has been observed, it's been measured, you can even predict it will happen. So this is not uh, this is not any sort of a proof. This is a misapplication of a well-known scientific event. You know, if you don't know what something is, you don't get to just make up solutions for it. It's like the yin yang. If you picture the yin yang symbolism in, in Chinese astrology, it's the sun and the moon circling around the flat, around and over the flat earth. You know, Eric, as a New Age yoga instructor familiar with New Age Eastern philosophy, I would think that you would know what the yin yang was. It represents good and evil. It represents male and female. It has nothing to do with a sun and a moon revolving around a pizza pie earth. The ancient Chinese didn't even know what pizza was. The, the yin and yang is everywhere in nature. In fact, the male, female, inhale, exhale, good, evil, up, 
down. But they do away with these things. They say there is no up and down, that everything's just relative. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. Einstein and Newton walk into a bar. The bartender says, I'm sorry, I can't serve you unless you tell me which way is down. What direction do they point? Would it be that way? They say there is no good and evil. They're all about moral relativity. They say there is no sun and moon yin yang aspect because the sun is actually really, really big and really, really far away. And the moon is really small, but a bit closer. And from our faulty perspective, it just looks like they're exactly the same size in the sky. You know, saying that simply because we better define what down is, uh, whether it be towards the center of mass or in the direction that time slows down, depending if you look at it from the way Newton would look at it or the look at it the way Einstein would look at it, it's just two different ways of describing the same thing. You know, if you talk about good and evil, uh, that has been a question for philosophy for thousands of years. And right now, my understanding of it is, and I think most people would agree with me, is there are certain things that are absolutely evil. I think that there are certain things that are good. And um, this is not relative to the flat earth. Geography, astronomy, physics are not subject to a determination of whether or not it's good gravity or bad gravity or good physics or bad physics. It's simply physics. It's amoral. It doesn't have a moral compass. It just says this is what happens when you drop something. Masonic magicians lying to you so that you don't believe your own eyes, which tell you that the sun and the moon are equal, divine, balanced opposites in the sky, revolving over and around us, keeping time like a celestial clock and calendar. Very true that you can use the location of the moon or the location of the sun to help you tell time. Uh, that's, what, that's how sundials work. I can tell the direction that is south by looking at the moss on the base of trees. However, that does not imply that there is some divine causation on the placement of the moss on trees. To read that into it, or to try and assume that the sun and the moon are in a special place in the universe simply because they revolve around the earth or the earth revolves around them, is just a little bit of a stretch. And when you go to see the original, NASA has lost all the original Apollo moon landing footage and telemetry data. So to, to try and verify the original footage or the data that's in the, the um, modules that supposedly went to and from the moon, you can't check those now. So th there's no physical confirmable evidence that they were anywhere but a sound I'm going to have to ask you here, Eric, to stop being an idiot. All right. We went to the moon. It's just as simple as that. It's a matter of public record. The evidence that we went to the moon is not just the telemetry tapes, and it was a great tragedy that those were accidentally erased. We have the capsules. We have soil and rock samples from the moon. We have images of the lunar landing sites. We have reflectors that were, replaced, that were placed on the moon that are still functioning to this day. You know, to think that the telemetry data, the tapes, as you call them, are the only evidence that we went to the moon is simply ludicrous. I think that we need to take just a moment and find out why Eric Dubay and the Flat Earth have such a hard on for the space program, okay? The answer is really quite simple. It's not that he, they don't believe that we can do it. They don't believe that we have the technology. That's not the case. The bottom line is, if space exists, and we've been there, we've been there with cameras. If we have cameras, we've got pictures of the spherical Earth. That destroys their entire premise. If we, if we have one single photograph of the hemisphere of the Earth from orbit showing the planet to be round, that is the one and only reason that they are so against NASA and the space program. 
Yeah, and I want the audience to understand what you just said. Folks, what, what Eric is saying that the most heralded, most famous achievement, accomplishment of mankind, of humans, the landing on the moon, NASA lost everything. You know, again, NASA did not lose everything. Last, NASA lost one bit of information, some of the telemetry tapes. We have the spacecraft, we have the artifacts on the moon, we have the astronauts, we have the samples that they brought back, we have the worldwide press coverage, we have our opponents in the Cold War monitoring the flight. You know, come on, give me a break. Oops, $30 billion, sorry. They're claiming there's, there's nothing in their archives, nothing in storage, nothing in a cardboard box someplace that has anything to do with the Apollo missions. Um, it's all gone. I need to emphasize this again, and that is that, no, it's not completely all gone. The tapes are gone, all right? That's what they're referring to here. Yet they're putting it across as if we have no evidence whatsoever that Apollo ever existed, all right? This is dishonesty. This is quote mining and cherry picking at its finest. So don't be fooled by this. So I know that's probably going to sound very, very bizarre to a lot of people, but you know, you can do your own research and do your homework, and that's what you're going to find has happened and is what they're saying. It's truly amazing. You know, DeBay is kind of going on to the next subject now from spaceflight. I find it rather insulting to have some yoga instructor in Thailand come on out and say that all of the sacrifices made in the American space program and the Soviet and the Russian Federation space programs were as part of a large conspiracy that only a yoga instructor from Thailand could discover. All right. We had American heroes, people like Gus Grissom, one of the Mercury 7 astronauts. We had Al White, the first American to do a spacewalk, and Roger Chaffee, who was from Grand Rapids, not far from where I grew up. These are people that died in our quest for space. Let's show a little respect to their memory. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. We'll have another installment here shortly. This rabbit hole's too deep for me Feel my brain getting real sore